And I'm so glad the, uh, to see that the city has made this one of its major priorities because uh, there's going to be a tremendous need for uh, going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hong Kong Science Park. Very delighted to have Professor John Cao, who really steers the biomedical technology ecosystem here at the Hong Kong Science Park. He's officially now the head of Institute for Translation Research. So welcome, Professor Cao. Thank you, Arthur. So speaking of biotech development, the government has emphasized for the very first time this year the development of health tech in its policy address. Well, it did uh, designate biotech as one of the four key areas back in 2018. But this year, it's special since uh, there are some concrete steps for it from you know establishing a mega research institute in the loop to optimizing the clinical trial procedures. How did Science Park get involved in the process? What have been done and what will be done, Professor? Well, um, well first of all, Science Park, we're very happy to uh, feel that the government has put a priority in biotech for the future of Hong Kong. And uh, for the past 20 years, Science Park has been working diligently on grooming this uh, biotech ecosystem. Uh, five years ago, we only had about 20 or 30 biotech companies, and today we have more than 160. So clearly, it's something very exciting that draws people to come to Hong Kong and to come to Science Park uh, to be doing biotech. So there are quite a bit of activities that goes on here in Science Park that contribute to this growth. Uh, first of all, Hong Kong has uh, always been a financial center, uh, has a very strong IP protection law, has a wonderful university that generates not just great ideas, but also talent, connectivity to uh, uh, kind of uh, these uh, growing markets, whether it's Greater Bay or Southeast Asia. So we're taking advantage of all these fundamentals to grow biotech. So at Science Park, um, not only we have, uh, over the past few years, built critical infrastructures to support these type of uh, uh, R&D activities, but also looking at different programs to support small, medium, or large companies uh, to come to this part of the world and build their uh, biotech dreams. Yeah. I guess the science part is more than really providing core facilities or even providing funds, sort of really optimize the entire value chain. You know, I guess, uh, Professor, you have done a great job in linking up different stakeholders from scientists, clinicians, I guess, venture capitalists and uh, so on and so forth. Well, among many initiatives, you are now the head of the Institute for Translation Research. Well, being translation is kind of crucial in linking up the entire value chain. Can you explain more on the initiatives you are leading and what's the reason or motive behind? Yeah, thank you, Arthur. So we're very proud to announce the launch of the Institute for Translational Research, or ITR. Um, so basically, when we were doing all these uh, activities in Science Park, they were happening in, in uh, very scattered. And forming this institute basically pulled all the resources and all the knowledge base into one entity. So for um, entrepreneurs and companies, this represents a one-stop shopping for them, kind of an end-to-end -end service of the entire R&D value chain. So in addition to infrastructures, we have uh, drug safety centers, core facilities, uh, GMP production for ATPs, and so on and so forth. But we also have programs designed to support companies along the different parts of the journey. From the very early on, we have an Incubio program that is a four-year incubation program for biotech companies. It's more than just money and space. We provide a suite of services, connecting them to uh, investors, uh, making them understand the market demands, and uh, how to pitch their idea in 30 seconds. So, so that, that is a very successful program. We're able to attract the likes of AstraZeneca and KingMed as our co-incubators to grow these companies. For companies that are uh, SMEs, that are at the growth um, kind of the, the duration, we have a diff different service uh, programs for example, we have a Clinical Translation Catalyst Program, that's CTC. That's it provides not only fundings, but regulatory strategy and clinical planning 
uh, for companies transitioning from that preclinical to that clinical stage. As we know, that is a, a very challenging phase for uh, big and small companies. And to be able to successfully complete a phase one safety study will make the company eligible uh, for Hong Kong Exchange Chapter 18A, that's the pre-revenue IPO. So a lot of companies are looking to kind of hit the milestones and we have programs to support that. And for large, uh, kind of a late stage companies, we have different platforms. We have a MedTech co-create programs that encourage companies to, to collaborate. It's an open innovation uh, platform where companies can leverage their expertise and uh, kind of find new solutions to support the patient journey. And we also have a healthy aging platform. As you know, General Tech, in an aging society like Hong Kong and a lot of developed economies, um, including mainland China, um, aging related issues is absolutely uh, critical. And the uh, healthy aging platform is really a platform that connects uh, solution seekers such as NGOs, hospitals, um, with solution providers. These are some of the top uh, part companies working on innovative solutions. So basically, ITR provide these end-to-end -end support and create opportunities to support a uh, biotech company throughout their entire journey. Wow, you must be very busy, that's all right. <laughs> Loads of initiatives. I have a good team, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, we, uh, Hong Kong Foundation, touches upon on Geron Tech as well, mm. and we were particularly interested in the conducting of clinical trials. In fact, we have been to the clinical trial center at mm. HAU. I believe you have been in touch with, with their team, right? That's right. Yeah, That's right. So it's really about linking bench to bedside, Correct. as Professor you frequently say. In fact, Professor is also the chair professor of translational medical engineering, right? Correct. So he's a busy person. So can you share with us your translation experience and your research conduct and how is it related to the translation process or experience you are sort of propelling here? Yeah, um, a bit of my own personal journey. I think back in the days when I was uh, just starting out in academia, uh, translation wasn't or commercialization wasn't the, the most important thing uh, in my mind at the time because I was focusing um, basic research. But as, I, as we develop our uh, understanding of fundamental biology, we were able to develop tools uh, that can improve the healing process. And it got me thinking that wouldn't it be nice if some of these solutions can actually be applied to patients who need them. So I, I kind of stumbled on this translational journey uh, not realizing at the time how little I know <laughs> about this translation process. Everything from uh, uh, scale up to validation work, uh, regulatory obviously, and, and, and all these things. Um, so I know from an academic researcher's perspective, what are some of the major challenges? And that's why ITR actually have all these support and services uh, to help academics uh, such as myself, to do these tr translational work. So they don't need to figure everything out on their own. And I think um, in Hong Kong, we have wonderful academics, uh, some of which are very successful entrepreneurs. And I think they share that same passion that after so many years of doing fundamental research, they realize they have something really special that the uh, patients are looking for. So we have uh, a lot of successful academics setting our companies in Science Park and join our programs. So if you're academics thinking about how to make a, a lasting impact based on your research, please feel free to get in touch with me. And I think ITR is here to help you. Yeah, thanks professor. Yeah. ITR is really a big thing recently. So as the policy address uh, touches upon the development of biotech, I think it didn't come out of thin air, right? Mm. We both, I, I guess, Professor, you would agree with me that there is a search of, search of attention for biotech development as uh, probably we got more startups getting involved. What's your observation of that? Yeah, um, you know, health and biotech is something, is an industry that will never sunset. As long as there are people living, there will be a need for better healthcare, better solutions, better preventions, better treatments, better diagnostics. 
So I think in a nutshell, there's always this market need for better solutions. And, and I'm so glad the, uh, to see that the city has made this one of its major priorities, uh, not only to serve Hong Kong, uh, but also the Greater Bay Area and of the region, because uh, there's going to be a tremendous need uh, for better healthcare uh, going forward. And, and, and we're very proud that in Science Park, we've been working on this for many, many years, and that our success, our results have shown to be a, uh, uh, to be recognized. So we are looking forward to continuing contribute to this endeavor. Well, but speaking in, in, in terms of facing the demand of the search of, of, um, of healthcare services, do you think Hong Kong has the readiness and resilience to embrace the changes and develop its industry? Yeah, there's, uh, there's this thing I was told called the Hong Kong spirit, mm -hmm. that uh, if you work hard, you believe in yourself and, and uh, you tackle uh, worthwhile problems and you will find a solution. So that Hong Kong spirit um, is very needed, very much needed in mm -hmm. Biotech because Biotech is difficult. And I think that we call this the valley of death. Translating from basic science to a clinical solution is a very long journey, requires different kind of skill sets and different talents, highly risky. Uh, and we need that Hong Kong spirit to make it happen. So uh, if Hong Kong cannot do it, I don't know where else. Um, leveraging on the Hong Kong spirit, Professor, you were involved in the production of a uh, report by uh, Hong yes. Kong Foundation before, focusing on the biotech collaboration between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. And people say to really leverage on the readiness and resilience and optimize the supply chain to tap onto the market, the Greater Bay Area is the way out. Mm -hmm. Do you think so? And what do you think Hong Kong should do to tap onto the market? Yeah. Um, my understanding, from my perspective, you know, biotech, uh, uh, it, it's such a large sandbox and no single city, no single company, no single entity can do everything. Um, you know, ITR and Science Park, we're here to contribute, but certainly we cannot do everything. Um, so finding the right partners, finding the right opportunity and creating uh, that possibility is definitely the way to go. And our Hong Kong Foundation, you guys did a fantastic report Thank you. Thank you. looking at the Greater Bay, how to leverage uh, different strengths coming together, uh, whether it's talent, infrastructure, connectivity, uh, fundraising. You know, I think there's a lot that different parts of the Greater Bay can contribute. I think the challenge is how to coordinate all this uh, assets, how do you coordinate all the strength that you can provide a very uh, simple to navigate platform for uh, innovators to, to be successful. So your report is actually quite important. Thank you. Yeah. We have the kind uh, involvement of Professor as well earlier in, uh, in July. And speaking of the Greater Bay Area, we believe the loop, the Lok Ma Chao loop may be a way out for collaboration between Shenzhen and Hong Kong. And as you have said, may coordinate resources across the border. And mm -hmm. among the many resources, we have talent, capital, uh, other science resources, bio materials, so on and so forth. And I, I noticed that, Professor, you publish a That's report right. <laughs> on talent development in the Greater Bay Area. Can you explain more on that? Yeah, uh, happy to. So uh, the Loop, obviously, is a very exciting development. And uh, this is an area where we hope a lot of things can come together uh, the, to leverage all the strength not just Hong Kong, but Greater Bay, uh, to really propel and realize this biotech dream. And one of the most important elements is obviously talent. And in your report, you, you uh, definitely touched on that. And the uh, Hong Kong Biomedical Technology uh, Development Advisory Panel, I know it's a mouthful, but it's a group of people that we believe in that uh, Hong Kong has a role to play in biotech. And we put together a report focusing on talent. And to us, talent is at the center of all these exciting activities. And we believe that there are concrete steps that the government can take, that university, the private sector can take, not just in Hong Kong, but in the Greater Bay Area, 
to really groom the talent that's needed to make biotech a, uh, a very successful sector for, for the region. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. I guess uh, this is a really special moment because Professor Kao has been really involved in our research process and he himself has published a brilliant report on talent uh, development. So thank you, Professor. Thank, thank you for you. having us here and uh, kudos to your great work. Thank you so much, Arthur. It's thank you. such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you.